this month comes and we reconnect and we make up for lost times. And for many of us it's an awakening that lasts us for a lifetime. But the human being falls into the hifla, this is the nature of human being, we fall into hifla. <coughs> and if you fall into this heedlessness, the generosity of Allah is that Ramadan will come back. But, will you be here next to Ramadan? That's the question. Will I be here next to Ramadan? Ramadan will always be here until the end of time. It's a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His mercy. But when you are here, when we are here during this month, we should take advantage of it. And that's one of the greatest things that we can do is to rebuild that relationship that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A relationship of this spiritual intimacy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because sometimes you just get distant from yourself and from your Lord. What I wanted to do tonight, um, I wanted to read a poem and a beautiful poem and do maybe a little translation and commentary on it. And this is written by a, a Persian uh, spiritual master of a contemporary, Junida Nishaburi. And he wrote a poem that is, uh, I think it's, it's very it's a nice poem to read in Ramadan and talk about it. So, for those who speak Persian, they will, I think, appreciate it more. But I, I'll try my best to do a translation and an explanation of this, these lines. So he says, this is a poem, it's called Munajat. Those who don't know what Munajat is, these are poems that the poet is talking directly to Allah. There's no veil. It's just this moment, what we call the moment of intimacy where Veils are lifted and you are uncensored with your Lord. What I think that Mulana Rumi said, he said, you need the grammar in order to have a really good life in this world. If you want to get on the corporate ladder, the better your grammar, the higher you will get. It's the nature of this dunya. But he said, if you want to get with Allah and get higher on the, on, on the ladder of God to get closer to Allah, you need the grammar of the hearts. And that's different from the grammar of the language that we, that we learn. The grammar of the heart is... There's a beautiful hadith of the Prophet about a, a man, this is a Muslim, who loses his camel. He loses his camel and he has every, his entire life is on this camel. Imagine everything he has and he, he gets lost. And in that moment, he's devastated. He searched everywhere. He can't find a camel. He lost his entire belonging. A lifetime of saving. Then, suddenly, he finds the camel. He's so happy, he wants to give gratitude to Allah with the correct grammar of the tongue, but he can't. Because at that time, the tongue cannot speak. It's only the heart that speaks. And he shouts to the heaven and says, Ya Allah, you're my servant and I'm your Lord. Thank you. Instead of saying, Ya Allah, thank you, you're my Lord and I'm your servant. So he says it's backward. But the Prophet wasallam told us that Allah knows the coding of the heart. Just like language has coding. Just like your phone has code. What's on the screen is not what's behind the screen. It's 01001001110, whatever it is, right? Allah knows that code in the heart of what you meant to say. Allah knows the thought before it becomes processed in your head. Something goes through your head, Allah knows that. And this is why the ulama said the highest level of taqwa is the taqwa of your thoughts. So he says in this intimacy with Allah, he says that I had a moment of intimacy with Allah and Allah spoke to me in this beautiful, you know, when you have these moments, Ya Allah, what should I do? Ya Allah, I need this. And Allah, He, La tahzan in Allah Don't, don't grieve, don't be sad. Allah is with you all the time. He never abandons His servant. We abandon, we think we abandon Allah, we can't. You can't abandon Allah. No matter what you do, we are, we are stuck. We are like a, a, a piece 
on a chessboard. We can go everywhere, but we can't get out of the chessboard. We're always on the chessboard. No matter where you go, you're on the chessboard. Even if you're the king, the queen, you're on the chessboard. That is the design of God. That's how Allah designed us. So we can't get out of it. So he says, Then I throw Khane Makun Musafa Kardanash Baman. Bama Dardi Dilaf Shokun Mudawa Kardanash Baman. So this man who complains to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this being distant, he says, Allah told me that why don't you make your heart my house and then I will purify your heart. Because everybody is in search of purifying their hearts. He said, just make your heart my house, I will purify your house, your heart. You don't have to do any work, I will do it, I'll take care of it for you. And then tell me all your pain and suffering. Because what we have People go everywhere. They knock on every door except the door of Allah. It's the last door where we have nowhere to go. We go to Allah. We are supposed to go to Allah first. The first door that you knock is the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, tell me all your pain. Tell me your suffering. Tell me everything that's happening in your heart. All the difficulties you have. People have difficulties. They can't even talk about it with other people. And Allah said, just talk to me. He says, listen, if you talk to me, I will put the ointment of healing on your heart. I'll take care of all the pain, all of the suffering, all of the bruises, all everything you're going through, Allah can fix it. Nobody else can fix it. You can go to all of the doctors, you can go to all of the shoes, you can go to everyone. But Allah is a healer of the hearts. So let the light of God enter your heart and it automatically purifies your heart. And talk to Allah about your problems. And Allah will put, uh, put the ointment of healing and remove all your pain and suffering. He says, one of the things about people, sometimes we make dua, I feel like it's not getting accepted. If you don't feel like there's a connection. He said, oh my servant, if you feel like this, you have lost the key of kabul, right, of acceptance. It's like, I've been making dua, I've been doing this, nothing is happening in my life. He said, if you feel like that, if you have lost the key to the door of acceptance, he said, come, and spend one moment with me. One moment with Allah. He said, I will find it. You don't even have to find it. I'll find it for you. Be of Shon Katray Ashki Keman Hastan Kharidorash. Be our Katray Eklos with the Yon Kardanash Boman. He says, Why don't you shed just a tear? These are the tears of remorse. These are the tears of intimacy. These are the tears that, you know, one of the best tears you will ever shed. In your life, is that moment you just tears will drop from your eyes, and somebody would do ask you why you're crying, and you say, "I miss my prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam." I just miss him. I'm shedding tears for him. That is a priceless tear. A tear, tears of remorse. When you do something wrong and you feel so bad, you shed a tear. Those are prices. So he's saying that God is telling me, why don't you just shed a tear? Because I am the buyer of your tear. Allah is the one who is buying. And he says, why don't you just bring some, just a drop of a cross. One drop, like a drop of rain, of rain, a cross of sincerity. One drop, and he says, I will turn it into an ocean for you. Because at the foundation of our religion is sincerity, the khlas. If you bring anything with a khlas, Allah will multiply it. He can multiply it for infinity. He give you a, a for one thing. For one action, He can give you reward that the size of Mount Ohr. Oh, 
اگر در خواب روی یک دسته شد دل بر مکن از ما در این خانه دخل باب کن و واکردنش با من If this dunya, the people of this world, they, they close their doors on you, don't turn away from us. Why turn away, turn away from Allah? People lose their job, they turn away from God. People get betrayed, they run away from God. He, he is saying, if everybody is shutting their doors on you, come on. Why are you separating yourself from us? When was it the human did a knock on my door and I didn't answer? When did you knock on my door and I didn't answer? Come knock on my door and I promise I will answer. And this is in our tradition that if you keep knocking on the door, it will open. But you have to keep knocking, right? You have to keep knocking. There's a story uh, that's based on the hadith of the Prophet in the Gulistan of Sa'adi that we do here on Saturday in the class. That there's a man who who's a sin, sinner and he keeps sinning, but he asks Allah for forgiveness. Ya Allah forgive me, Ya Allah forgive me. And then Allah says he doesn't want to listen to him. And then he says, Allah forgive me, he goes back, Allah doesn't want to listen to him. Ya Allah forgive me, Ya Allah forgive me. At the end Allah says, I, I feel embarrassed not to forgive him. You're forgiven. And Sa'adi says, what an amazing Lord. We sin and Allah feels embarrassed not to forgive us. We are the sinners. Right? But Allah says, you know what, this servant keep asking me. I'm going to forgive him. So, the doors of Allah is open. But, who is knocking on the door of Allah? Nobody. Most people, there are times that, especially in this night of Ramadan, there are times that there's nobody at the door. Like the midnight hour, the hour before Fajr, it's empty. It's like when you go here, you go to some, if you go to a place, if you go to a rush hour, you get stuck in traffic jam. There's a lot of people on the road. If you go to a store uh, on Saturday and Sunday, there's going to be a line. But if you go when they first open, there's no line. If you travel now anywhere, there's no traffic now. Uh, there are the same thing, there's nobody at the door in the midnight hours. The night is for the awliya. The awliya, they stand up in the night and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know nobody's there. Right? Nobody's there. It's like going to the Kaaba. It's crowded at some time. At some point, it's not crowded. Especially like in, in, in Mecca, if it's hot, like at noon time, not, 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 not a lot of people making tawaf, but that's the best time you can go if you have the himma. Right? So get up at night and do prayers if you feel distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, Baman do hajat al-khudra ijabat me when I'm He says, why don't you come to me and tell me your haj, your me, and I'll fulfill it for you instantly. Talakun anchi mi khahi wa muhayyo kardan ashmaman. And then ask me anything you want and trust me. I will provide it because I'm Allah and I can provide anything in any amount I want. There is no limit for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's treasures are inexhaustible. And then he says, Be a kabla as wukui mar roshan kum hisabah. Come to me, and this is a, a hopeful way of, of, of uh, putting this poem. It's all based on the hadith of the Prophet. Come, come, Allah says, come to me and do your auditing before you die. And this is why the doors of Tawbah is open. Inna Allah yaqbar Tawbah al abdi ma'alam yukhara. Allah accepted the Tawbah of His servant, the Prophet said, until the soul is being ripped from the body, until your last breath. Allah doesn't close the door of Tawbah. He leaves it open because He's merciful. Allah is mercy. So He's saying, come at least before your death, do your auditing, do an accounting. What have I done? Do something. What wrong have I done? What right have I done? He said, just bring everything to me. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything that you have done. Let me sort them out for you. I'll sort them out for you. I'll remove the evil and the bad and the good I'll multiply for you. And this is the generosity of Allah and we know that. 
Analysis Chukhurdi Ruzi in Buzumara. When you have the, uh, when you ate the sustenance of today that we provided for you, when you ate the sustenance, because everything that you're eating is when your name has been written on it. Everything you're eating, your name has been written on it before you were created. And that's why they say in our tradition, when a guest come in, they come with their own provision. They don't, they don't eat your food. They eat the food that was written for them before there was a heaven and earth. Allah has already written on the tablet, on the Lawh Mahfud, it's been written, right? That this food will be eaten by this person at this time. So when guests come in, you shouldn't worry about it. No matter how many people come in, they are coming with their own provision to your house. So he's saying, when you're eating your provision that we provided, just be grateful. Have shukr. Shukr and ni'matkum. Ghami fardo makhur. Ta'ine fardo kardan shuman. Please don't worry about tomorrow's food. I'll provide it. I'll take care of tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow's food. When you eat today's food, be grateful. Don't worry about tomorrow's food. I'll take care of it the way I did it today and yesterday. Okay. Right? Allah will take care of it. There's a famous story in the Muslim of Rumi about this cow that goes in the uh, goes in the, there's the Rumi said there's a there's a jazira, it's an island, and there's a cow in there, one cow in this island. And he goes and he grazes and eats all the grass. And at the end of the day, he looks and goes, Wow, I ate all the grass, there's no grass. So he goes, he's he's, he's fat and, and big. And then he goes to the stable and he, the whole night he's like, my God, there's no food tomorrow. How am I going to eat? I ate all the grass, everything was gone. So he loses all the weight, stress, anxiety, he becomes skinny. And then so the next day he goes up and says, wow. And then he sees all the grass grew again. And then he eats it, oh my God, he, he's happy. And he's, you know, with big he eats. And then that night comes, he goes, oh my God, what am I going to eat again? I ate all of them this time. And then he becomes skinny. And then so then Ruby says, he said, oh human being, you're like that cow in that island. Every day you have the anxiety. What am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to eat tomorrow? How am I going to put you know, bread and butter on the table for my family? Right? And Ruby says that, he says that, uh, think about this. Every person that was responsible for your coming into this world, your father, your grandfather, your great grandfather, all the Adam and Islam, they all ate food. Allah provided for them. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Oh, you wouldn't be here. Nobody died of starvation. Right? That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Because they, they have food. What makes you think that He's not going to provide for you and your children? Allah is a provider. Right? Allah is a provider. Stop worrying about these things. So He says, when you have the, 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 uh, your sustenance for today, just be grateful for the name of Allah. Don't worry about tomorrow. Allah will take care of it. Allah will take care of it. This is just to have tawakkul. So that doesn't mean you don't work and you don't do things at all. You, but you have to have trust that Allah is the one who's taking care of it. The Quran ayah rahmat farawanas ay insan bakhalin ayah tafsiru ma'na kardanash mu'man. He says that read my Quran is filled with ayah of rahmat of mercy. Filled with verses of mercy. Just read the verses, I will do a commentary on it myself. You just read it. Just read my book, I will do the commentary on them. And I will fulfill your life with, with Rahmah and with mercy. And he ends, Agar umri gunahkir di masho no mi az rahmat, tu toba no mara ben riso imza kardana shbaman. And if you have sinned all your life, if you have sinned all your life, don't feel hopeless from the mercy of Allah. And he says, why don't you write a proposal for Tawbah and I will sign it for you. Just write the proposal for Tawbah and I will sign it and approve it. Many people, they don't know the power of Tawbah. It's the first station on the path of spirituality. The first station is the station of Tawbah. And the last station, the station of annihilation, when, when you become egoless, personal. But isn't the last station more important and more 
powerful and closer to Allah or the first station. Because those who make tawbah, they instantly become a worthy of Allah. Instant. And we have books written by our awliya and ulama about those people who make tawbah and they became instant wali. Instant awliya. Just turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the night of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the days and the nights of making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he accepts the tawbah of his servant. Allah accepts the tawbah of his servant. There's nobody turns to Allah that Allah rejects them. He has made it a sunnah that I will not reject if you make tawbah. You are sincere in your tawbah. And we know in our tradition there are alcoholics who make tawbah. Like Bishr al Hafi. He was an alcoholic. And we should have, we should be, we shouldn't look down upon people because people don't know about addiction. You know, if you have counsel people with addiction, it's, 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 it's a horrible thing. And now people should know because most people are addicted to their phones. Mm-hmm. They can't live without their phone. Imagine someone who's addicted to alcohol and, and to these things. May Allah protect us and our families and our children Amen. from these trials and tribulations. But if somebody is afflicted with that, we should really help them and not look down upon them because this is not our tradition to put people down. There was a man who, who made Toba in here. I knew the man. We mentioned it today in the class. Then he made Toba from alcohol. Uh, Wallahi, his face was growing renewed. I always used to go to him and ask for, for God. And he's surprised in my community he still called me alcoholic. Look at him, you know, that alcoholic. Look at him, he's a Muslim now. But he made sincere Toba. So people can make Toba that he become better than us. Bishop became better than everybody. Bishop, we mentioned Bishop Al Hafi now. You know, it's a, you know, a thousand years later, we're mentioning Bishop Al Hafi. You know, why are we in, in the mosque? Rahim Allah, the last person in his soul. An alcoholic. He was Da'im Al Khamar. These are the people like when they have alcohol in the morning, like the first thing in the morning, they have their bottle, and the last thing in the evening, they have their bottle, and throughout the day. He, he, you know, people said Bishop never walked straight. He was always walking like, you know, as he was falling. Because he was always drunk. But what happened is when Bishop saw the name of Allah on the ground, the name of Allah, there was a paper that said Bismillah Rahman Rahim. And he was drunk. And he saw it on the ground. And it was, it rained a little bit, it was money. And he went to pick it up and said, I, I can't walk over the name of God. This is a drunk Muslim. I can't walk over the name of God. And he went to pick it up, but he couldn't because we know this is the first thing they do when the cops stop you. What do they do if they think you're drunk? They say, you know, walk on a straight line. Because you can't. If they put your hands out. Like, nobody, they're all wobbling, right? Put your hand on your nose. They can't even do that to drunk people. Because the eye-hand coordination is no longer there. You lose that. People lose that. So he goes to pick it up, but his hand goes somewhere else. He falls into the mud. He went, gets up and goes, nah, I, I gotta go. I can't do this. Goes, How can I walk over the name of Allah? And then he goes again to pick up. He falls again. Three times he goes to pick up. And then he says, Ya Allah, if you make me fall a million times, I'm not going to go over this. Mm. I'm going to pick this up. I'm not going to walk over your name. I'm a drunk I'm a horrible Muslim, but I'm not walking over your name. I'm not walking over your name. So he picked it up. He went home. He washed it. Cleaned the mud. And then he had some nice old perfume. So he put the perfume on it too. And then he put it in a nice cloth. And he put it high place in his house. And then he, he got knocked out. Fell asleep. He had a dream. And he heard the voice of truth that told him, said, Bishop, as you purified our name on that paper and perfumed it, we will make your name pure and perfumed. For your name is mentioned to the end of time with beauty with a son. An alcoholic. Instant. Because that's the nature of Toba. It it scans your body from head to toe, removes every evil, and purifies you in one breath. This is the power of Toba. You inhale Kufa, 
you exhale beauty. And that's the power of Allah. He can do that with anybody. And that's why you don't count anybody you see on the street all of this world. You say, oh, I'm a, they're Islam haters. Or they could be like Omar ibn Khattab. He was an Islam hater. Abu Sufyan was an Islam hater. Hain was an Islam hater. Khalid ibn Walid was an Islam hater. Pretty much all of the Sahaba, except a couple of them, were Islam haters. But they became lovers. They turned to Allah and Allah accepted. So may Allah accept our ibadah in this month. And may Allah make us amongst the people that make Tawbah and turn to Him. Inshallah, amongst the people that we have that relationship. No matter what you do in life, whatever you do in life, just remember one thing. Don't close all the doors to Allah. Because you make mistakes. Young people make mistakes. But don't close all the doors to Allah. Leave the door open. Keep a window open. And that window can save you. That window can save you. Because if you close all the doors, then you're by yourself. Nobody survives on this planet Earth by themselves. And if you have the entire planet behind you, and you don't have a law, you have nothing. But if Allah, if Allah is by your side, and there's nobody there, you have everything. Because the cosmos is behind you. Jibreel is behind you. The wing of Jibreel, Bali Jibreel, Iqbal has an amazing poem about Bali Jibreel, that you know, when he opens his wings in the Sidratul Muntaha, in the seventh heaven, which all of the creation from the first heaven to the seventh heaven, in size is like a rain thrown in a desert. That's how big it is. Vastness. So when you open his wing, the entire horizon of the seventh heaven was covered with the wings of Jibreel. You don't have Jibreel by your side. Or, you know, what do you worry about superpowers or gangsters or somebody coming on the streets? Allah is on your side. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Don't close all the doors to Allah. This Ramadan comes in for the people who have a little window open. And then Allah, will, His light will come through that window. And a lot of the people are broken hearted. This is the time. People are broken hearted. And a lot of young people go through the betrayal. If you went through betrayal, don't worry about it. If I didn't go through betrayal when I was young, I would have never practiced this religion. I would have never practiced it. Yeah. It was my friends who betrayed me that I started practicing. So sometimes Allah does these things to you, you don't know why it happens. And if you're cornered, and a lot of people, you know, we had a, one of our neighbors committed suicide, we had a Muslim. It was on the news from a couple of days ago. We live in the same neighborhood, saw so all these people by their door. I was just talking to a few young people about it, that things get tough in life. It's not, this is planet Earth. I'm sorry, let me just remind you again. Planet Earth. This is, we came here to do time. This is the penitentiary. This is, and you can only get out of here on good behavior. This is a prison. A dunya sigilor movement with Jannah al Kafir. The dunya is a prison of the believer. And it's paradise for the disbeliever. But when things get tough, they don't know how to get out of it because they don't have a law. If you have a law, I'm telling you, if you have a law, you have everything. But if you don't have a law, that's where people take their life. And that's why suicide is high amongst the non muslim And those Muslims who don't know their, their religion. But if you know your religion, this is called, Islam is called the religion of life, my friend. It's the religion of life. And the Prophet said, uh, let none of you wish for death. Don't wish for death. It's not a religion of death because life is a great gift from Allah and only He gives and only He takes it. So when you have it, appreciate it. Enjoy life with beauty and with ihsan. Our enjoyment is different than their enjoyment. Because they enjoy the body, we enjoy the soul. That's the difference. Enjoyment of the body lasts about 50, 60, 70, okay, 100 years, right? And that's it. And then all you do, you, you eat and you defecate. 
Right? That's, that's the enjoyment of the body. But enjoyment of the soul is eternal. Because sa'ada, once it enters your heart, happiness, that light of Allah, then you're happy in this world, and you're happy in the barzakh, and you're happy in the hereafter, eternally, inshallah. And may Allah re reunite us back with our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we were in the Yawm al-Ala. So, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam,